Hello and welcome. My name is Dave Cadu, and I'll be your moderator and the producer for today's IWCS webinar series event. I am also honored to be your CEO and director of IWCS. And um, uh, we look forward to providing a lot of new events this year, um, both within the conference as well as outside of the conference. So we look forward to your participation and support. A few housekeeping items. Uh, as an attendee, uh, you'll be part of a larger audience. So during the presentation, all participants will remain in a listen only mode. And um, this event is being recorded for rebroadcast and archiving on our website, as well as our IWCS YouTube channel. Uh, we encourage you to submit your written questions at any time during the presentation using the chat panel on the right of your screen. Uh, if you're in, the, uh, in, in our virtual uh, site, you'll see the chat function to the right. Uh, so we encourage you to type those questions it's, uh, in that space at the bottom and hit the send button. Uh, your questions will be addressed time permitting at the end of the presentation. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, this presentation will be archived uh, on our website and it is being hosted by our cable and connectivity industry forum. So today we welcome Paul Brigandi. Uh, he is the application development leader uh, for Dow uh, in Pennsylvania, USA. Uh, he is, will be presenting his technical paper on ethylene copolymer modifiers for high performance, low smoke PVC compounds. Dr. Brigandi is an applications technology leader for the Dow packaging and specialty plastics wire and cable business in North America. It's based in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. It has experience in, in the power transmission and distribution, uh, as well as telecommunications markets, focused on research and development of new um, insulation jacket, conductive composites, and polymer modifier material developments. His technical expertise uh, includes formulations and processing of polyolefins, elastomers, and polymer composites. Paul is active in several industry organizations, including the Insulated Conductor Committee, the Communications Cable and Connectivity Association, and Fiber Broadband Association uh, technical committees. He also serves as the first vice president and on the board of directors of the Society of Plastics Engineers of the Palisades Mid-Atlantic section. Paul has earned a doctorate degree in polymer science and engineering from Lehigh University and a bachelor of science in chemical engineering from the University of Delaware. He is also an active adjunct professor at Lehigh University in the material science and engineering department. So with that, uh, Paul, uh, we welcome you and thank you very much uh, to present at today's IWCS webinar series event. So if you want to go ahead and take control and there you go. Uh, we can see uh, it. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And thank you to IWCS for inviting us to give this webinar today to present our paper from uh, last year's IWCS conference on ethylene copolymer modifiers. And we'll talk about these materials for uh, high performance, low smoke PVC compounds, particularly with a focus on uh, plenum applications. I want to recognize also uh, all my coworkers that have contributed to this work uh, across many different sites within, within Dow. So the Focus of the presentation today will be really an introduction to the materials and the polymer chemistry. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about PVC compound performance as it relates to um, these materials in PVC and their miscibility. Uh, as I said, with primary application focus of plenum cables and other uh, fire retardant applications, we'll look at flame and smoke, as well as some other low temperature 
uh, properties and mechanical properties. So as I said, the, there are stringent requirements for flame retardant application, particularly low smoke when we start talking about plenum, plenum rated um, cables. Uh, so the evolving technology really uh, that, that the industry has been faced with as we've kind of shifted um, due to the pandemic, right? So there's a lot of work uh, by everybody on this phone uh, to really evolve our, our telecom infrastructure and make sure that we have access to uh, high-speed data and reliable data for communications, whether it be uh, remote work, uh, school, uh, you know, and, and the like. So when we start talking about premises cables that are installed in plenum spaces, they're required to meet the NFPA uh, 262 standard, which really is meant to limit flame and smoke propagation. So in general, there are two types of materials used for this application that meet the requirement, uh, those being fluorinated ethylene propylene uh, material, so FEP, uh, as well as flexible low smoke PVC compound. So when we look at the polymeric modifiers, we're really looking at them to enhance performance and longevity of the PVC material. So PVC in and of itself is inherently rigid. And we typically are gonna modify that polymer to make it flexible, to impart some flexibility to it. Plasticizers used in PVC are typically low molecular weight liquids, so phthalate based. And these liquid plasticizers tend to result in higher smoke generation and migration out of the polymer over time, which really leads to deteriorated aged properties. So one way to address these challenges is to look at what we say permanently plasticized PVC. And that's in, achieved by incorporation of non-migratory, low TG, high molecular weight polymers, um, which are completely miscible with the PVC so that they are, don't tend to migrate out over time and really leads to the longevity and high performance that we need. So we can tailor the chemistry to allow for complex formulation design and allow for flexibility when it comes to formulating uh, different materials for a given application. So what we'll talk about today, and you'll see throughout the course of the presentation, are two main types of ethylene copolymer modifiers. And these are both containing an ethylene backbone. And that ethylene backbone is really there to impart strength, crystallinity, and mainly controls the processability of the material. We add in a second co-monomer, whether that be vinyl acetate or uh, butyl acrylate, difference being in the length of the side chain. That's really gonna impart some flexibility to the, to the polymeric modifier, as well as start to introduce some polarity, which is important for miscibility with PVC. And the last component is carbon monoxide. So we actually add this monomer in to impart even higher polarity, uh, which is really gonna dictate the compatibility with the PVC resin. So these tur polymers, so three monomers creating the, the tur polymer are gonna be used throughout the talk. And here I just give you a table of some of those tur polymers uh, and their properties. You'll, you'll see them in some of the compositions that we actually tested but also throughout the literature. So the first thing we wanna talk about is how they enhance the miscibility uh, to improve the performance of PVC compounds. So as I said, traditionally liquid plasticizers are used, and in this case, we'll compare it to the polymeric or ethylene copolymer modifiers. And the first thing we wanna look for is, is the miscibility. And one way to do that is to look at the 10 delta P from a uh, rheology measurement. And so that's the red curve we show here. 
And typically, if you're blending two polymers together, uh, you'll end up with two peaks or respective of each of their uh, glass transition temperatures. And in this case here, we look at the liquid plasticizer, which obviously is, is a liquid of itself. And when mixed with PVC, you're represented with a single glass transition peak. And similarly, when we look at the polymeric, where you would typically, again, in blend C2 peak, we show miscibility through the single peak here in the tan delta curve for the polymeric plasticizer. So that's going to give us our, that's showing or proving our miscibility. And what does this mean over time? Right, so if we look at some age samples, these are aged under xenon R for 10,000 hours, just representative of uh, UV aging. When you look at the case of the plasticizer that is based on liquid, over time you tend to get the migration out because of its low molecular weight and you start to see cracking within the material, right? So this is just a representative sample that shows the cracking after aging under UV conditions. Conversely, when we look at the polymeric plasticizer, we see a nice homogeneous and uniform uh, piece of material still left behind, right? And so, the, the polymeric plasticizer is going to remain in the material and that material is gonna stay flexible and more flexible, more resistant to cracking over time. Now, if we can couple this to the fire performance, which is really a critical aspect of these materials, particularly the plenum rated cables. In this case, we're looking at a very simplified PVC formulation. And we're doing that strictly to understand the benefits, if there are any, of the polymer modifier on the composition as it relates to fire performance. So here we're looking at a, a straight comparison of PVC plus liquid and PVC plus one of the polymeric plasticizers. We have added in, in this case, a di, diisodecal phthalate, so DIDP here, at an equivalent uh, a loading as we have the polymeric. Just some other heat stabilizers, antioxidants, just for um, some slight stabilization. But what, and so what we look at here is a cone calorimeter. So this is just an example of the material after it has been burned. And so you can see uh, they obviously both very burned up, but there is more material left on uh, with the polymeric plasticizer. And when we start looking at the data and the results, right, there's a couple key points that we want to highlight. So the first is looking at time to ignition. So that's the time that it takes to, to start burning after the initial spark. And so in this case, you have almost a two times increase in the amount of uh, resistance. So that time to ignition is longer for the PVC plus the polymer modifier. And so that gives more time uh, before the fire would start. The second key point is the polymer modifier based composition results in a, in a lower peak heat release rate as well, right? So that is, it has, less heat or energy associated with it when it is burning compared to the liquid. Um, so those two uh, combine together, typically another uh, parameter that is calculated out in, in the industry is the fire growth rate index. So in this case, you see we have a 50% lower uh, or you know, half the fire growth rate index uh, with the PVC plus the polymer modifier. So it's essentially, if you think about it, it's giving us longer time to ignition as well as lower peak heat release rate or lower energy uh, for that fire. And so it's more uh, resistant and, and much, uh, much better when you think about time to escape if in the un unlikely event of a, of a fire in a building with cables jacketed with such material. 
Uh, one thing I'll point out is the limiting oxygen index. Uh, not a big difference, right? We don't see a huge difference in LOI. Uh, and that's to be expected as that, that's a property that's often used, but also, also often dictated by the formulation itself. So if we take it a step further, I wanted to show a couple examples of polymer modifiers in plenum specific applications or plenum specific formulations. And then these are both from the uh, literature. And in the first example, we have Coker who worked on a composition comparing the ethylene copolymer modifiers to uh, chlorinated polyethylene as well as nitrile uh, butadiene rubbers as uh, plasticizer components to the PVC. Again, more of a traditional uh, plenum type formulation as far as additives go. Uh, but the key points to highlight here are the systems based on the uh, ethylene copolymer myofire uh, resulted in lower smoke density. So that's another uh, key parameter, as we said, for plenum applications is, is reduction in smoke so that in the event of an emergency uh, or fire situation, you're able to see um, leaving the building, um, as well as, you know, obviously the different, different um, gases that are generated, whether acid gases, et cetera. Uh, but here we're looking at smoke density, and those with the ethylene copolymer modifiers are lower than the other materials used. Uh, but more importantly, um, it's also lower than a control compound that they used uh, in this study here. So it shows the benefit of a lower smoke density, both flaming and non-flaming um, comparably, uh, as well as lower peak heat release rate as we showed in the, in the previous slide. And in the second case, again, we have Griffin with, with her and her team there looking at these materials, again, in a, in a uh, plenum cable application compared compared to some commercial uh, materials. What we show here is there's lower, uh, again, peak smoke release rate compared to the commercial control specifically, uh, as well as a lower total smoke release rate. And again, with the incorporation of these materials, we are able to permanently plasticize the material so they maintain their flexibility um, at low temperatures, which we will talk about uh, in subsequent slides, but the low temperature brittleness temperatures or point in, in, in each of the respective cases is shown. So here is uh, some data that was generated, again, somewhat of a simplified formulation or a model formulation just to show the benefits um, and the performance with the polymer modifiers versus uh, liquid. Uh, here we're looking at uh, a comparison of both the, uh, what I'll say, the VACO, so the vinyl acetate ter polymer uh, and the butyl acrylate ter polymer in, a, in this model composition. And what we're showing here is actually you can get uh, much lower brittleness or lower brittleness temperature with the uh, butyl acrylate base ter polymer versus the uh, vinyl acetate, but both are significantly lower um, when compared to liquid in this case. Uh, and this is important for those applications where we start talking about uh, cable ratings and, and installation environments that require, you know, down to minus 40 C um, performance, right? So, Incorporation of these polymeric materials at the low temperatures uh, imparts that flexibility. It's largely driven by, um, you know, I'd say the TG of the polymer, uh, but in, in these particular cases, then the, the uh, extent of branches and, and length of those branches or side chains uh, within the monomer, uh, whether butyl acrylate or vinyl acetate. Uh, again, we've also shown here uh, the performance after um, interaction with a solvent, so in this case, a hexene, uh, basically an extraction. Um, and what we show is, again, to the point of miscibility, 
the, the polymeric materials remain within the, uh, within the PVC and low temperature performance is maintained, uh, whereas uh, the liquid uh, material is, is drawn out and your low temperature, uh, low brittleness temperature is, is significantly lower or higher, I should say, in this case. So here's another uh, example where we're looking at uh, imp improved oil resistance. Uh, in this case, we've looked at just the uh, two different types of oils, but this becomes uh, important and, and relevant for us when we start talking about cables that might be exposed to different uh, environments. And you know, there's a host of different fluid uh, resistant tests and, and encounters where these materials um, could come into contact with various fluids. Um, but in this case, we're showing just some representative uh, compositions uh, that we showed before where we're comparing the, the two polymeric modifiers uh, with that of the liquid. Uh, and in both cases, what you're looking for is zero change uh, here in weight after aging at a, at a month in the particular liquid or oil. Uh, and you can see that the change with the polymeric plasticizers is quite low, um, particularly compared to that of the liquid. Again, showing, showing that the migration is minimized and it is compatible and miscible within the PVC, uh, whereas the liquid would tend to migrate out. And so this, again, is going to be important for, for those applications requiring uh, some different fluid resistance. Uh, and, and maintaining those properties over time. So here we wanted to look at the effect of filler loading. So many of the high performance, uh, particularly the low smoke uh, applications require the PVC to be formulated even further. So incorporation of smoke suppressants uh, and other additives to be able to uh, meet those stringent requirements. Uh, and what we're showing here, again, I want to emphasize just really a simplified example to show what you can do when you, you know, when you're to take these materials and formulate in, in your compositions. Uh, the polymer modifier here, if we look at the, the tensile strength and the modulus, we're here going to compare liquid to uh, polymeric, but we've also blended or mixed the two. So they are uh, it is possible to use the polymeric as a partial replacement or in combination with liquid as well. And what we want to point out, right, I think the, the key here is we're looking at 20 parts filler versus 400 parts filler. So a, a dramatic difference to highlight how these uh, filler impacts the, the performance as well as highlight the different modifiers. I think 400 an exaggeration, right? I think that's on the very high end of where anything would really be. Uh, but again, for demonstration purposes, uh, what we see is an increase in modulus. So that's the bars uh, at 20 and 400 parts. As expected, you see a significant increase and the modulus is much higher with the uh, higher filler loading. Um, but what I want to call attention to is really the tensile strength. And the difference between the tensile strength uh, in, the, in the case of the liquid versus the polymer. So here, when we look at the, the 20 parts and 400 parts of filler, uh, when you look at the polymer, there's a very small change in the actual tensile strength of the material. So likely due to the additional homogeneity that these polymeric modifiers provide and the ability to help disperse uh, some of these uh, filler into the system. Uh, whereas with the liquid, you actually see uh, about a 36% reduction in tensile strength uh, when you start to increase the filler load. So this tells us that we can actually utilize these materials to, to pack more uh, filler into a system to achieve, let's say, higher smoke performance or smoke reduction performance, uh, or even just maintain uh, filler loading and get increased dispersion. 
Uh, nothing, I would say, dramatically uh, evident from the elongation as expected. Uh, we can see that the polymeric material does not impact the elongation properties and it's maintained. Um, obviously with 400 parts filler, you would expect your elongation to decrease significantly, which is what we see. Um, but again, no real significant difference uh, between the combination. Uh, and, you, and you can see when you blend there or mix the two, it, you end up about in the middle. So what I wanna show here is really uh, one example where you can actually enhance the compatibility of uh, PVC and various fluoropolymers. So we, so we said that FEP and other fluoropolymers are, are also used in these applications. Uh, there's been some examples, uh, including this one in the literature where you may, may want to blend PVC with fluoropolymer uh, for a balance of performance and cost. Uh, in, in most cases, uh, in this, this particular example, we're looking at uh, polyvanilidine fluoride, PVDF. Uh, with PVC, uh, one of the problems is with the low temperature performance. Uh, basically, here we're showing incompatibility between the two polymers, so the PVC and the fluoropolymer. Uh, what, what has been demonstrated uh, by, this, by this group here is that when you incorporate, uh, in this case, the uh, butyl acrylate polymer modifier, you're able to provide uh, miscibility, uh, not only with the PVC, but now the acrylate functionality provides some compatibilization with the PVDF. And so that's going to result in improved uh, mechanical properties uh, with respect to cold temperature and some fluid resistance. Uh, but at the same time, what I show on the right-hand side is a, a plot from the cone calorimeter on uh, total smoke release rate again. And what you find is that at a given ratio of 7, 3 to, three to 1, so that's PVDF to PVC to, to modifier, uh, when you compare the performance to the base components themselves, so PVC, PVDF, uh, as well as a couple other compositions. Uh, the, the key ones to focus in on based on that ratio are the T0 and T5. And those were both shown to have more improved uh, smoke release uh, performance. So much lower uh, than, than the, even the polymers themselves. So just in summary, right, we've shown that these ethylene terpolymers are used as permanent plasticizers in PVC compounds for wire and cable applications. Uh, the modifiers are miscible with PVC. They will not migrate over time to so have that improved performance and longevity. Uh, they help reduce smoke generation when, when used in uh, various compositions. Uh, either as an alternative to uh, the liquid-based plasticizers or in combination with. They enable higher level of uh, filler incorporation so that, you know, you can, you can tailor your fire performance, whether it be improved or reduced smoke, uh, much, much better uh, flame propagation, et cetera. Uh, and they really allow the formulations to be custom tailored to any given application. Um, whether it's, whether it's a need for improved mechanicals, low temperature, uh, or more importantly, again, the fire resistance. Uh, so with that, I'd like to thank you for your time. Thank IWCS again. I'll take some questions, uh, but leave my contact information uh, as well if you have anything afterwards. So Paul, again, uh, thank you very much for that excellent presentation. Uh, 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 it was a very popular presentation back in uh, at the IWCS 2020 conference. And we, uh, we're very thankful to have it now archived on our website. So uh, there were a, a few questions that came in. So I'd like to take a, a few minutes here to address those questions with you. Um, is this modifier something that can be added to the compound at the time of extrusion, or is it only available in a given PVC compound itself? 
pellets. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, majority of the time, it's going to be added in when the um, PVC is compounded. Uh, but I, but I think um, you know that's something that we could work on uh, looking at. I, I don't have uh, any specific examples that I'd be able to share, but I think that's something that we can look at uh, doing in line and and kind of seeing what kind of performance that we could get. Yeah, and, and dispersion and, and consistency will clearly need to be an issue to have the right. Exactly. The, the right distribution within within the formulation, but uh, certainly a very good question and suggestion. Uh, what is the role of steric acid in your cable formulations, if you can address that? Yeah, so in, in that case, um, I, I won't pull up the slides, but in that case, we were just looking at a general uh, formulation. So that wasn't necessarily specific to cable. That was more of just a, a general run of the mill um, PVC compound uh, that you might find even in other other industries. It wasn't specific to this. In that case, it was more um, just to show again the the bare minimum uh, and and really focus on the modifier itself as far as performance. I think typically they they'd be added uh, sometimes as a release agent uh, and and process aid really in that case. Right. And um, what is the lowest softening temperature for these kinds of cookers? Uh, yeah, so I have, uh, just pull it up. So you'll see, you can reference uh, slide five if you, if you see. So basically the TGs or, you know, the glass transition temperatures for these are going to range around uh, minus 32 down to about minus 54. Uh, so that's going to kind of really dictate your, your flexibility. Softening temperatures are, uh, let me see if I, I think I have that as well. Yeah, they're, they're going to be fairly low, right? So around 45 to about 66, depending on the one you choose, you know, depending on the material. Okay. Um, are these kinds of copolymers available in powder form? Uh, I would say ours are are not typically. Uh, they're more they're pelleted polymer. Um, but uh, I can't speak for I can't speak for any others out there. Um, what are the best methods for compounding alveloid grades with PVC? Yeah, I think I think in general, I know we've we've uh, had them run, um, you know, either either milled, um, but I think also uh, have been used on um, twin screw type of extruders as well. Um, I think it would depend on depend on the formulation and and what your uh, desired outcome is. Okay, um, do the PVDF, PVC composite jackets have the electrical properties to be usable in category 5E or 6 cable applications? Yeah, again, that, that exam, I, I would say in general, I, I haven't seen a lot of it. Um, that was just one example that we found uh, in the literature. Um, so I think it, you know, again, it would depend probably what what you're looking for the performance to do, and then what you know, what base materials you would even be starting with. Um, I think, uh, yes, particularly if you're uh, looking for insulation materials. Very good. Uh, are there any more questions? Uh, checking the the chat function here. Uh, I don't see any more questions. Uh, Paul, so again, I, I want to thank you for participating in today's webinar. Uh, just uh, so you're aware, uh, this presentation or technical paper is paper 2-1. If you wish to read the technical paper, it is on our archives for uh, 
um, the IWCS 2020 virtual event. So feel free to download that uh, paper to get uh, more information as, as presented by Paul uh, today. And if you want to reach Paul directly uh, to ask any individual questions, uh, and he can also engage other uh, colleagues at Dow as well. Uh, you can see his contact points here on the screen uh, right now. Um, again, this uh, webinar has been recorded and uh, will be archived on our website. Uh, and typically it takes a week or so to, to get that up and running. And um, uh, again, um, you know, each of these IWCS uh, webinar series uh, events are recorded and uh, we will conduct uh, both technical paper presentations as well as sponsored company uh, events several times per month uh, in these webinar events uh, over the, uh, the coming year. Uh, each of you will be receiving an announcement uh, for these events. So please feel free to share them with your colleagues so that uh, they can also register and participate uh, in these webinar events. For, for over 70 years now, the IWCS Cable and Connectivity Industry Forum has been the recognized leader uh, in showcasing new technologies in, in cable and connectivity products, processes, and applications. And we would not be able to function and, and bring all of this excellent technology information to you without our sponsors. And we greatly appreciate and give thanks to um, our partner level sponsors, as you see here, uh, the predominant suppliers in our industry. And uh, again, this year, uh, they will be sponsoring uh, our conference as well as these webinars. So thank you to our sponsors. The next 70th annual conference will now take place virtually uh, on Monday to Friday, uh, October 4th through the 8th. Uh, please watch your inbox uh, on the social media and our website to, on how to register and learn more about this exciting event uh, as it becomes available. We have over 75 excellent technical papers uh, this year, and we hope that you will take time to register and participate uh, in this event uh, in October. It's scheduled over, over the five days and it will also be available uh, on demand if your time zone doesn't quite permit you to, to participate um, in the live event. Uh, so again, uh, we thank you so much for participating in today's event. And with that, uh, we wish you a great rest of your day.